So when it goes like this and then it goes like that, well again, that's, that's going to be doing something heterogeneously. So imagine that the herpetologists go out and the first days they are sampling leaf litter. And they do that until they get bored. And so their sp accumulation curve is going like this. It's pretty flat. And then they say, hey, I'm sick of doing leaf litter. Let's go work the stream. And they, they get to the stream and that first day, they find 10 species of amphibians. Okay? And that's gonna produce that break. Okay? So that's an argument either for mixing up your activities pretty studiously, or it's an argument for keeping one daily list for diurnal surveys in leaf litter, and another daily list for stream surveys. Is it possible to avoid the situation to have a, maybe to harmonize the, the, and have a, a, an idea of the, the biodiversity of uh, the area? Yeah, so how could you do that? You could either, um, you could do what Moses does, which is random points, right? He essentially forces himself to um, not be systematic or not be uh, biased, right? Or you could, um, separate your activities into subsets that are more consistent. And again, that's, you know, let's do accumulation curves and daily lists just for stream surveys, okay? And so th that, will, that will make your units of effort more consistent from one unit to the next. Okay. Because I was thinking like uh, maybe if you want to establish a transit or plots, they can be made such that uh, there is some a type of gradient so we can cross all the type of maybe vegetation mm -hmm. or all type of uh, micro ecosystem. So maybe by uh, making a entry, you can come across uh, different different species. I don't know what okay. is also applied in uh, yeah. So yeah, you can, I, I'll, I'll use different words than you're using, a transect implies that I'm kind of doing one sampling effort that goes, you know, maybe from lowland to highland or dry to wet or stream to far from stream, some gradient, right? What I would do instead is something more along the, the lines of stratified sampling. So I would say, you know, in 100, 100 meter elevational bands, I want to do five points here, five points here, five points here, five points here. And so that's essentially distributing my sampling or my effort in different parts of the gradient. Okay, so yeah, you can do that. But what I would suggest, again, a transect implies kind of one individual effort, you know, sampling the transect. What I would prefer to do is to do an inventory between 300 and 400 meters of elevation, an inventory between 400 and 500 meters of elevation, which is to say at each elevation, I would be striving to get that accumulation curve to lie down, right? I would be trying to get a complete list for each of those elevations. We're gonna be talking about this stuff the rest of the morning, so. So we'll, we'll come back to all of these concepts. But instead of having a single sampling or a sampling that crosses the gradient, I would rather characterize each piece of the gradient with an inventory. Okay, thank you very much, Dawn. Um, what I understand by homogeneity and heterogeneity in terms of collecting data, I think um, it's better to collect data in a more homogeneous, in terms of homogeneous manner, in terms of your methodology and how you do it. So, but now when I look at heterogeneity in terms of 
the terrain like for for us the plants people you want to cut the transect which is like 20 by 500 mm -hmm. and then you work on it if you look at it in terms of the terrain it will be a heterogeneous kind of something right right which i think that it's good because you cut across many different communities in terms of that and you can be able to see to to come across many different species i think that you have those kind of bombs in terms of the terrain hmm? yeah but in terms of the um, method that you use okay you cut a transit here 20 by 500 and you cut another one somewhere and it's homogeneous in terms of the method now i want to know what um how can you do do deal with this kind of heterogeneity in in terms of the fact that you are collecting your data and then at one point something comes in like the environmental kind of issues rain may be falling and yeah. you decide to okay you are walking every day from 7 to maybe 4 p.m and then you get back to camp 7 4 p.m you get back to camp and on one day it, it rains the whole day and you can't it's even go out to the field right so you have that kind of uh, heterogeneous stuff how can you cancel that out when you are Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we are working on the data. How can you? Okay, so those were kind of two questions. Um, first question was how to, or first comment that you made was how to deal with the heterogeneity of a landscape when your sampling may be in pretty big quadrants. And in that case, the answer is pretty simple: have more smaller quadrats. So essentially there's always heterogeneity. Even if, you know, even if Moses were doing, you know, 1 meter quadrats, which are way too small for sampling trees. But even then, you'll have heterogeneity within 1 square meter. So instead what we would want to do is decide, okay, at this spatial scale Anything that, any variation that's finer than that spatial scale, I'm ignoring. This is why I was just saying here that I wouldn't call it a transect. I would stratify by the gradient, okay? But even when I do that, there's heterogeneity within my sample, and I just have to ignore it. So you have to decide on a basic unit. And Moses, for his sampling, has decided on the basic unit of uh, a one hectare plot. And so that means, and, and no hectare is completely uniform from one corner to the other. So he's basically, because his unit of sampling is one hectare by one hectare, he is ignoring the heterogeneity beneath that, finer than that. And that's okay, okay? Um, but those should be conscious decisions. Okay, those should be decisions that are thought about in advance. So for example, um, for the bird team, we could do accumulation curves by net line, and each net, each net line might be 100 meters long. And so we're going to have to ignore the heterogeneity within those 100 meters. Or we could go and say, well, we're going to do a, an accumulation curve for every net. Those are 12 meters long. And so we could you know, keep our data at the level of net one, net two, net three. But those nets are 12 meters long. And maybe this end is in the sunlight and this end is in the shade. Or this end is a little higher and that end is a little lower. So there's heterogeneity at the level of the net. We can assume and ignore that, which is fine, or we could keep data at the level of every meter of the net. You see, there's always heterogeneity at a finer scale, and you have to simply decide, and it's usually a practical decision, you have to decide at what level you're going to ignore it. So I'll give you a, a classic example for bird people. We will, you will see soon, we'll have a net line going out that trail, a net line going down to the stream, and a net line going over there. And ideally, 
we would use the mapping techniques that you learned yesterday, and we'd have a nice um, vector shape file that describes that net line and that net line and that net line. And every bird that comes into camp will be, yes, that was on net line one, this bird was on net line two, and these five birds were from net line three. That'd be perfect. And that's what I usually try to do, and I usually fail. And that's because, you know, Mark will be off recording, bird watching all morning, and he'll come back and he'll, you know, he'll have checked this net line going out and this line, net line coming back. And, you know, maybe there'll be some local guys helping us out, or maybe, you know, the herpers will go out and they'll say, hey, you know, I brought these birds from that net that crosses the trail. And I'd be like, uh, Rave, which net? You know, the local guys may just, they may check all of the net lines and mix up the bags. And so it ends up being kind of a logistical nightmare to keep all of those data straight. You know, I've tried, what I usually do is I have a, a, a marker pen and bird comes in and I immediately put a mark on the bag. You know, net line one, net line three. But there's a point where, you know, you just say, nah, <laughs> forget it, right? Okay, then your second question was about heterogeneity of your sampling units. So let's say, you know, the plant team goes out and they sample 20 one hectare plots, okay? But as you said, for 18 of those, they were able to work dawn to dusk. And for two of those, it rained half the time. They probably weren't, you know, getting as good a look up into the canopy, right? Or, you know, the, the bird guys run six net lines, and five of those are, are set up for five days each, and one of them is only up for two days. Or, you know, observations on days, and some of the days it's raining and the bird guys are sitting in their tents and some of the days it's not raining and we're out working. So that sort of heterogeneity gets in there. And what I would say is that these methods are fairly robust to small departures from the homogeneity assumption, which is to say the result you get is not so bad if there's some variation, minor variation from sample to sample. But if you have like, you know, if your normal day is 100 records and you have a couple days in there where you only got 10 records, probably you want to leave them out, okay? So again, there, there's some art to this where you are um, either removing data because they are not comparable, and you would state that explicitly in the methods section of the paper, or there are, some, there are some opportunities to weight each unit of effort in the analysis. Okay, so you might be able to weight those two days that we hardly went out and only got 10 samples, 10 records. You could downweight those in some of the analysis. Okay? Um, the important thing is that you're explicit about everything that you do. Okay, we had a question over here. Yes, my question has to do with the two curves. The one that is going up continuously and the one that slants. Uh -huh. So, the one, is it possible in this situation for us to have a situation where the curve is just continuing to go up and we are, that means we are having more new species, just keep on moving like that and then when the, the, the curve that slants horizontally, at that point, can we stop sampling? Uh -huh. And then the other question which I wish to ask is, has to do with um, normalization of data. Because I have a friend, um, he was doing a bushmeat offtake. Mm -hmm. So in his data, there was, um, he was sampling hunters. Then there are some hunters that were killing about, let me say, 10 animals, 15 animals a day. All of a sudden, he, she realizes that there was a hunter who was killing about uh, 100 animals a day in our data. So I don't know, that result, can it be there or is there any need to normalize the data because it's like an abstract out of it? 
And then the, I think this is the last. Um, I also wish to. Uh, there was a there was a, a two picture you showed of the animal when um, survey is done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So in that case, you said we can see that um, at this particular point where we have the same number of species that are occurring, that we can say um, we can actually say survey has been carried out. So what is I I'm, I'm thinking otherwise. Can we not continue to do a research in that domain, maybe to have the trend, the number of animals in that particular mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. environment, or do we just have to just leave it like that, that it's okay, we say you don't and that's all. Okay, so for your first question, you basically anticipated the idea of results-based sampling. We'll come back to that at the end of the morning, which is to say, what a, we would call that when a, when a curve levels off, you say it, reached an asymptote. Okay, the asymptote is a limit that it approaches but maybe doesn't quite reach. But when, when one of these curves truly levels off, and I'll give you a more quantitative way of asking the same question, but one of the curves truly levels off, yeah, that's a good time to stop. Okay? Your second question was about normalization, and that's essentially the same as what I just talked about, where that hunter who was getting you know, four times as many as the other hunters, you really need to find a way to weight records from that hunter because he is getting four times as many individuals, so he may be getting, he may have a four times higher probability of detecting a new species on a given day, okay? So, what you saw in some of those examples that I showed you is that instead of using a unit of effort of day, they were using a unit of effort of individuals. Okay? And so that then essentially controls for the fact that, you know, Kate went out and only killed 20 individuals, but, but Dave went out and got 100. Okay? 